salvation may have come with gains, but not without some demerits. And this has led to many asking, is westernization a cause of blessing? Our correspondents attempt to answer this question. There is no gain saying that food is essential to life. And that is why the federal government is leaving nothing to chance to ensure food sufficiency. This effort received a boost recently with the provision of farm inputs to farmers in Ogoja local government area. In a typical African society, the passage of a monarch comes with a series of traditional rights. Same is the case as the Kuo people commence right of passage of the late Ndidem of the courts, Ndidem Patrick Inogukwa, the fifth, with official declaration of his demise. Also on our package is an update on the story of a teacher who allegedly infect 14 pupils with HIV. Stay with us for details of this report and more on our Sunday special. I am Erika Ivy, your uncle. tonight start with Calabar. The federal government effort to ensure food sufficiency and meet the Millennium Development Goals target on zero hunger has received a boost. This is equal to the provision of farm inputs to farmers in Ogoja local government area by the Cross River Basin Development Authority at the flag of, of dry season farming. Over high cents, Reports. The federal government led by President Muhammadu Buhari has been dogged in its determination to ensure food sufficiency through huge investment in the agriculture sector. And one of the agencies driving the policy is the Cross River Basin Development Authority. The managing director of the authority, Basi Mposon, says the Federal Minister of Water Resources and his organization are providing enabling environment and tools as subsidy rate for farmers to boot productivity hence the provision of the tractor and other irrigation materials. What we have done now is to create serious awareness for our people that they don't have to go to sleep, they don't have to change their profession when it comes to season like this, and that the federal government, like everything that we've had here, is for their own use. Uh, all, all they need to do is come to us and tell us they need it for so, so location, we go and assess the place, and then just for a small token, just to assist them. The chairman of Ogoja local government, Emmanuel Ishabo, lost the gesture of the management for considering farmers in Ogoja strategic in the food sufficiency agenda of government and promised to synergize with them to fully actualize the gesture. For, for us, as the Ogoja people, we are excited, you know, having this right, uh, right in, uh, in Ogoja. And uh, if I want to reduce it to cross river, Ogoja is the food basket of uh, of the state and truth be told you know uh, we've not done well you know maybe because of the encouragement and lack of uh, implements you know but with what we have here today uh, we're already encouraged the visibly elated farmer delighted by the provision of the tractor and other irrigation materials however expressed fears that such laudable gesture could be sabotaged like previous programs if no effort is made in monitoring its proper management. I'm very, very happy that we have gotten a tractor and some of this equipment that will assist us in doing our irrigation system of farming. But sincerely, for the new end, this one that came to the I see some element of truth and sincerity in what the program is trying to introduce to the process of and the, we were advised that the MD should form a tax with the So I will be monitoring all the inputs that she has given to farmers.
the flag of broad management of Cross River Basin Development Authority, the chairman, supervisor of Ogoja local government area and councillors, Royal Father, as well as farmers, to interface while strategizing on the way forward. In Ogoja, Urban High Saint, NTA News. And away from Cross River State, Bureau of Public Service Reforms has reiterated. Bureau of Public Service Reforms has reiterated its commitment through partnership to boost human capital development in the public service in Nigeria. This was at a strategic meeting between the Bureau and a group of accredited personnel managers in Abuja. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday reports. Human capital development undoubtedly plays a major role in the success and productivity of any organization. This meeting between the Bureau of Public Service Reform and leadership of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria is to further enhance public-private partnership for national development. Director General of the Bureau said the agency is collaborating with relevant organizations towards improving skills of public servants. The recent retreat uh, chaired by the President for Ministers and Permanent Secretaries, a lot of emphasis was made on skills, capacity building and improvement on the quality of service that we deliver. This is our own small contribution to see how we can upscale the performance of civil servants or public servants. For the people of Nigeria, that making people better, making processes better, reforming things both at the private and the public sector. The forum emphasized on skills, capacity building, and improvement on quality of service delivery to Nigerians. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Still coming from Abuja? Media practitioners under the umbrella body of Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria have agreed to use their platforms in promoting the unity of the nation. This was at the official swearing-in of the leadership of the organization in Abuja. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday again reports. It was a convergence of who is who in the media industry in Nigeria to witness the induction and swearing-in ceremony of the new leadership of the broadcasting organizations of Nigeria. One after another, they took to the podium to make inputs and charge the new leaders on the need for media practitioners to be professional and constantly observe ethics of their calling. The radio in your car and you... The things that are coming from the station, you can't believe that such things will be on the airwaves. At this time in Nigeria, there's nobody who can predict 2023. Therefore, these are times of momentous change. Kanu State Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduje, who observed the election in Kanu, commended the process. We have a vital role to play in managing all communications in the public domain in the interest of peace and national development. We will continue to partner with media houses and ensure that we have a business, a healthy business environment in the advertising industry. Director General, National Broadcasting Commission, Balarebe Ilela, is hopeful that the relationship between the regulator and practitioners will continue to wax stronger. Your contribution to the transition from analog to digital terrestrial television broadcasting is laudable. Most importantly, in the provision of much needed contents and technical support. For the incoming leadership of Bonn, please ensure that we take to logical conclusion the issue of broadcasters, the Society of Nigerian Broadcasters. I shall discharge my duties as chairman. And then comes the 14th chairman of Bonn, John Ube, who is the first chairman from the cable and pay TV sectoral group. We wish to restate our commitment to sourcing for training opportunities for Bonn members to deepen their technical knowledge and competent skills. 
The role of the Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibn Mohammed in Bonn, was commended by the forum. John Ube and the Vice Chairman, Mansour Liman, who is the Director General, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, are to serve in the leadership capacity for a period of two years. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. You're watching news reaching you from the studio of NTA Kaibar. You can also key in into our YouTube channel at YouTube slash NTA Kaibar. More news after this timeout. Don't go away. Welcome back to the second segment of our Sunday special. Many often ask the question, is the westernization a blessing or a curse? This is as a result of lifestyles of many who claim they have embraced westernization. Rosemary Obani in this report examines some arguments that are giving rise to the debates on how westernization has influenced social norms and values in Nigeria. Before the advent of colonialism, communal life throve in Nigeria, where respect for tradition and norms was highly recognized. There is now an unending conflict between civilization and tradition. Gone are the days children were nurtured to respect elders through traditional greetings with moral standards. All these values seem to have been eroded by westernization. Today, some of our native delicacies are relegated to the background in the place of fast and junk foods. Women have adopted to western style of carrying their babies on their chest rather than the back, which suits both mother and baby better. There are also worries that most of these borrowed cultures are as a result of exposures to foreign contents in the media and most especially in the entertainment world. No doubt people, especially the ladies, most of them these days dress almost half naked with much cravings for artificial makeup fashion craze. It's good to dress decent so it will avoid embarrassment. So when you dress decent, nobody will question you. Um, first and foremost, the way Indian dressing affects us as guys, one way I believe it affects us is it causes distraction. The Islam condemn improper dress. The sanctity and decorum that comes with the marriage institution is always in constant confrontation with Western ideologies and lifestyle. Little wonder there is increasing rates of divorce. Baby papas and mamas synonymous with celebrities. The Bible said the death do us part. But today a lot of things have gone wrong. Even today, a lot of pastors encourage people to break out from marriage. It's not supposed to be so. One would, however, argue that westernization has brought the developing countries like Nigeria closer to God. Churches, mocks, and religious activities have grown in leaps and bounds, checking some barbaric and obnoxious traditional practices such as the killing of twins, among others. More so, there are enormous benefits of Western culture, of course. And moving on, in July 2020, Newsline to reported a surge in rape cases in Niger State, especially the three involving minors that occur within a space of six days between the fourth and tenth of the month. The train then raised a lot of apprehension among members of Kusua Dere community 
in Changjake, both the local government area of the states. We also told you that the first suspect, 70-year-old Mohammed Sani, was convicted and sentenced to 30 years in the correctional center without an option of a fine. The latest development, however, is the death of the second suspect in the series, a 55-year-old Mohammed Ibrahim, who died in the correctional center on Thursday and 21st of this month, when he was expected to enter defense in the alleged rape case of a 10-year-old girl. Mustafa Abubakawu, who is following up rape cases, gives us updates. A wave of transfer recently moved magistrates across Niger State to new environments, which obviously delayed most of the rape cases. What is new in this report is the death of Mohammed Ibrahim, the 55-year-old suspect in the Kaswandere rape case allegedly raped a 10-year-old girl. Muhammad Ibrahim died in custody when a special warrant was issued to senior magistrate Paul Aliu Adama, who had been transferred to another jurisdiction to come back and finish the case. The authority of the new Medium Security Custodian Center, MINA, in a letter to the registry of the senior magistrate court 5 Tunga MINA, notified the court of the death of the suspect, who was said to have passed on in a hospital and sought the permission of the court to bury the late rape suspect. All efforts by the NTA Newsline to get some pictures of the deceased suspect, Muhammad Ibrahim, and to witness his burial proved abortive. Before his death, Muhammad Ibrahim was standing trial on one count charge of alleged unlawful sexual intercourse with a child, contrary to Section 18, Subsection 2 of the Niger State Child Rights Law 2010. It will be recalled that the prosecution closed its case after presenting four witnesses, including the 10-year-old raped victim in January this year, during which the court held the view that the prosecution had established the prima facie case of unlawful sexual intercourse with a child. The court also, on that date, considering the gravity of the punishment for the offense, ordered that the Legal Aid Council be contacted to help the suspect in defense. The Legal Aid Council, however, appeared for the deceased suspect, but before they entered defense, the magistrate was transferred. The suspect, however, died within the period a special warrant was issued for the conclusion of the case. So now, what are the position of the case and the fate of the raped victim? The, the case will just die down, okay. die together with the accused person. Okay, so what of the, what of the victim, the girl? It's unfortunate that the man died. She mm. might want uh, justice, and justice here is for him to either, if he's convicted, to be imprisoned or to pay a compensation or fine. Unfortunately, the suspect died while the case is yet to be determined and he seriously injured my daughter. I am pleading to the government and well-to-do individuals to help us. It definitely the victim will undergo as uh, intensive counseling. Uh, the victim will be placed in school. We normally give them a free scholarship uh, with a full school kit and um, constant monitoring of the family and uh, the parents and what they do in trying to bring up the child at that, after this trauma. Now, it will interest you to know that the fourth suspect of Kaswandere rape cases, Muhammad Sani, was convicted and sentenced. The second suspect, Muhammad Ibrahim, died in custody, while the mother of the third suspect disappeared with her victim daughter. Unfortunately, uh, we've, um, we've confirmed from the hospital that uh, he has also infect, inflicted her with uh, HIV. Meanwhile, NTA Newsline is following up development of some other rape cases in Niger State earlier reported, including that of a minor that allegedly raped another minor in the same Kaswandere area in Chanchaga, Boso local government area of the state. Some couple of weeks ago, 
on one of our platforms. NTA brought you a story on a committee set up to investigate an allegation leveled against a grade two teacher in Karabonde, Bungu local government area of Niger State, who allegedly defiled and infected 14 peoples with HIV. An update on the medical reports by the eight member investigative panel constituted by the state government confirmed that six of the underage children had bruises on their private parts, while two others attested that the accused kids and fingered them on their private parts. The 48-year-old accused, Osman Kaladima, whose HIV status has also been confirmed positive, is facing up to 13 count charges before a senior magistrate court in Chanjaga, Mina, the state's capital. Fatima Aliu reports. When I came to school very early in the morning, he said I should remove my pants and refused. He removed it for me. He now said I should remove his own too. And he refused. He removed it by himself. He now put me on the table and he now clamped on me. That was seven-year-old primary three pupil of Central Primary School Kalambondi in Borogu local government's area of Niger State. And one of the victims of the Randy school teacher narrating our deal before the investigative panel in Mina. Findings by the committee revealed that the 48-year-old accused, Usman Galadima, took advantage of the pupils who arrived early in the morning and those who remained in the school after closing hours to perpetuate the anus hacks in the classroom. Investigations also uncovered that the ugly trend had been on for more than a year before it gained public attention, and the case was reported to the school authority by some of the affected pupils and their parents four consecutive times, but the notices were swept under the carpet. We were actually shocked because the report came to us through an individual that uh, gave us that report that uh, such things were happening. And uh, when we tried to find out from the school what they had done, they told us that the teacher was suspended. And we felt that um, suspension was not enough. We had to swing into full action. The effect of the unfortunate incidents is devastating for one of the 14 underage victims who had to abandon school for fear of molestation and intimidation, as only 13 of them were brought to Mina for medical attention. Some of them are undergoing counseling. Some of our counselors have been sent right down to the uh, BUSA to go and counsel them. And uh, we're also making concerted efforts to bring them back here again. Although the accused, Usman Galadima, has been confirmed to be HIV positive, the status of the children are yet to be ascertained. Uh, all the various uh, tests that uh, were necessary to be conducted on the children was done, the syphilis, uh, gonorrhea, all STDs and uh, even malaria, all the tests and skin ailments was also conducted and uh, uh, the HIV too was carried out on them and uh, well at this particular stage, alhamdulillah, none of them have been asserted to be positive. Um, we are waiting for, uh, after a period of three months, for the incubation period, so that we can fully ascertain their HIV status. But the accused person has been uh, um, identified or from the hospital as being HIV positive. Meanwhile, the accused is being arraigned on false information reports by the police at the senior magistrate court, Chanchaga, in Mina, for charges ranging from voluntarily causing grievous oaths criminal intimidation, unlawful sexual intercourse with a child, gross indecency to sexual abuse and exploitation. Efforts to speak with the defense counsel are ever proved abortive. His admission during the committee or during the investigation is not the, the final. With his denial now poses the challenges on the prosecution to prove his case beyond reasonable doubt and that is why we informed the court that we are set to make 
presentation of our witnesses, evidences, material, and uh, otherwise improving his guilt beyond reasonable doubt. The senior magistrate Sada Tugambo, who presided over the proceedings, adjourned the hearing to the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of November 2021 when the 13 victims will be brought to court for cross examination. She, however, cautioned the media and the general public to protect the privacy of the children. Fatima Liu, NT News. People above the age of 60 are often referred to as senior citizens. They are usually looked up to for wise counsel by younger generation. A 70-year-old woman in our next report may lose all these following her arrest with fresh human skull. Wondering what she was doing with the human skull. Let's join Clement Barricade as he unfolds the story. The African traditional religion. Over the years, Many have expressed reservation over the manner in which the African traditional religion is being practiced by some adherents. <laughs> Madam SMS, 70 year old, married a traditional priest, now late, and after the death of her husband, the son took over the priesthood. The recent Operation Steel Water by the Nigerian Army in Uruganam local government area led to the discovery of a fresh human skull at the premises of this widow. She, however, claims ignorance of the human skull, saying it belongs to the son who is now at large. Since I'm not saying well, I asked my son where the skull is from. He told me the skull was found at the boundary of the land in front of my house. What they use the skull for and how they get it is what the police is trying to unravel. Though she alleged that her husband was a herbalist and after the demise of her husband that her son continued with the trade. But her worry and concern is what she is doing with a human head a human skull that is still fresh in nature. What this means is that murder has been committed somewhere. Another case under investigation is the alleged murder of a 12-year-old boy by his father and stepmother. What was his offense? They alleged that he was a wizard, that he was responsible for their downturn in life, for their lack of successes in life. In fact, when operatives of the command arrived their house, it was clearly written on the wall, Savior is a witch. And that predicated, while they conspired, having gotten an information from a prophet that he was responsible, they gave him a concussion with the intent of purging out the witchcraft or the wizard in him. The young man, 12 years old, died. The police is assuring the public that it will get to the root of the cases while those found culpable will be brought to book. After speculations of the traditional illness of the indigenous, of course, the yuk the talking drum was heard in the community signifying the official declaration of his demons to join his ancestors. As is customary with poor people, the late Ndidem Patrick in Ogukwa, the feat, passage was announced in his ancestral home, from where our correspondent reports that necessary traditional rites were performed for the official declaration. With the declaration here, all is now set for the sons and daughters of the 15 core clans of Calabar Municipality to officially announce the passing away of the late monarch, His Royal Majesty, late Ndidem Patrick Inogokwa V. The first daughter of the late monarch, Princess Juliet Okwa Okbara, led a procession from the Nkunip Royal Square to Mbe Town Hall.
the significance of what I wore this morning was to show that I am the first daughter and the princess of the court clan and the community. Being the first daughter and the princess, I have to wear that to sh show an honor to my father. The ancestral home of the late monarch was a gog as members of the community came out en masse to witness the official declaration, the significant slaughtering of a cow, as well as display of different masquerades to celebrate their late monarch. The new Ndidem of the course, Ndidem Eta Basieteta, the third, highlights the processes of the funeral rites of the late monarch. When the daughter at the hall told us that the father has gone finally, so we had to come out to announce the death of the father. We were trying to cure and deliver drugs, traditional drugs, to resuscitate our monarch. And unfortunately, that was carried out from 10 o'clock till 5 o'clock, 5.30 this morning. No, 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 no herbs could resuscitate him. With the official announcement of the demise of the late monarch made, other activities, including the opening of the morning house, commence in earnest. This is where we made it tonight. Thanks for watching. Good night.